Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesdays. Uh, it's May 4th, 2021. Uh, for those people on Zoom, if you have questions, if you think about things, please just open up the chat box, put your question right in the chat box. For those watching on Facebook, please just uh, put your comments and questions into the comment field. I am monitoring that feed and I'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. Please note this event is currently being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comment, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called Career DFW to help those who were unemployed in Dallas-Fort Worth area by putting everything they needed to know about their job search in one place. In 2012, I started CareerUSA.org to help people outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It is available on Amazon. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s, and I'll tell you about our upcoming program this Friday at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the Practice Interview Team, which is also known as the PIT Crew. Well, we have four outstanding speakers who uh, rotate on a monthly basis uh, to talk about, or on a weekly basis, to talk about LinkedIn. Uh, everybody's going to talk about LinkedIn from a little bit different uh, perspective, and they'll probably you'll pick things up a little bit differently from each speaker. So today our speaker is Locke Alderson. He's a career consultant, a, a recruiting consultant. Uh, he was a contract recruiter for many, many years. And today he's going to talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that get results. So Locke, thank you very much for being with us. And I'll make you a co-host and uh, take it away. Do I share the screen again, Jeff, so I can do that. So there we go. Well, thanks, Jeff, for welcoming me and having me on. Again, I am a recruiter, actually retired recruiter. I retired at the end of 2011 after completing an executive search for UT Dallas. And I've been doing career consulting, working with those in job transition since 2001. So there's some overlap there. Some of that was as a volunteer with groups like Jeff's and uh, the Dallas uh, Sales and Professional Development Group, a Career Transition Workshop up in Frisco, Frisco Connect, and some several other groups like that. And in 2013, I was approached about uh, doing a contract for Mullen International out of New York, a three-month contract. An outplacement firm that three months lasted for four years and three months. They sold out to Lee Heck Harrison. They got laid off, and two a month later, I was picked up by Lee Heck Harrison. I've been using LinkedIn as a recruiter since about 2005, as I, near as I can tell, and I've actually been speaking on LinkedIn and how to use it for job hunting since 2012. I just happened to look that up just a couple of minutes ago. Anybody who would like the presentation. You can send it to my email address, lockalderson at gmail.com, and I'll send you the entire deck that you can see. Again, while it is recorded, it's helpful sometimes to take a look at some of the slides and know what that's all about. Okay, what am I doing here? There we go. We'd like to go ahead and get started and talk about LinkedIn. Why would we want to talk about LinkedIn? Well, LinkedIn for a number of reasons. It's a, it, it contains for your profile, you want to have that in your profile, your headline and about sections. You want to complete your open to work section if you haven't done that. You want to have your skills and endorsements. You want to optimize your, your profile so that it gets found when people do a search. And how we'll talk about a little bit about how recruiters actually do searches and then searching for jobs yourself. And then I have some homework for some of you and things that you need to do a quick checklist at the end we're going to talk about. But why LinkedIn? Originally, it was a networking tool for sales and marketing professionals to keep in touch with one another, to develop contacts and leads and things of that nature. Well, recruiters quickly glommed onto that because, recruit, because LinkedIn has grown to 750 million people worldwide, 160 million of those happen to be in the United States. So recruiters, as I say, being like anybody else, 
hey, this is an open market for people. They talk about themselves and their backgrounds and what they've accomplished. So it became a go-to source for finding candidates, to find and engage candidates and build relationships. Well, LinkedIn is now the number one tool used by recruiters to find and source and qualify candidates. It's also used by hiring managers for the same thing. Much as it's been estimated LinkedIn statistics, so we'll give them credit for that, but 92% of the hiring managers rec and recruiters use it as a major sourcing tool. Certainly not the only one that they use, but a major one that they're involved with. And why? Because there, I mean, at any point in time, there are 30 million employers on LinkedIn with 20 million jobs available because you can post on them jobs like any job board on any given particular day. If you're not on LinkedIn and just attending the workshop to find out about that, you can go to YouTube up here and just type in LinkedIn or signing up for LinkedIn and filling in your profile. So that's what that's all about. It all starts with your profile. Again, it, your profile is one of those things that you want to talk about. It has a background photo. It has your uh, banner photo in the back. It's got your headshot that's in there. Your contact information is in here and then whether you're open to work or not. This is something relatively new that LinkedIn has added in the last oh, 08, 10, 12 months. And again, you want to see all the details and we'll take a look at that. In this particular view, I've opened it up only to recruiters can see what's in my open to work section. If that's what you want to do. Again, the other things in your profile are some of the things that are there in terms of particular your experience. And that's kind of like a resume that you in your profile. In your experience section, you want to talk about the duties that you perform, the results that you achieved, and some measurable activities from those results. But that's all part of what it's all about. Again, the things that you need to do to increase your rating on LinkedIn, and the highest rating that you can get is an all star, and that's the top rating, and that's to complete all the aspects, all the different portions of the LinkedIn profile, and your activity level is there. Again, having a professional headshot is great. It's not necessary to have a banner photo, but you can have that. Jeff will show you at the end a rather interesting one. We'll take a look at mine. Mine happens to be of a, a, a photo from a cruise that we did in the Southern Caribbean. You want to have a headline, the position that you're applying for. Generally, it's the title of the position that you're applying for, because if you don't put anything in there, LinkedIn will default to the title of your last job in your employment section. Again, you want to open, include your open to work section. It's underneath your headline. It allows you to list up to five different job titles. It allows you to enter additional information about what kind of work you're looking to, whether it's full-time, part-time, contract, temporary, those kinds of situations and where you might want to, want to work. If you want to work in other parts of the country, you can list that in the open to work section that's there. Your about section used to be called the summary it's an overview of your, of your career using keywords from your profession, talking about your duties and responsibilities and what you accomplished. That's vitally important to talk about the things that you accomplished because they add credibility to your experience. In many ways, your profile is like a resume, only the, re the resume is pretty, is pretty short, usually about two to three pages, and your profile could be much longer than that. You can also use your profile to talk about things in the first person. You can also use it to talk about soft skills that you have, which are generally not recommended in your resume. Your contact information. It's vital that you open up your contact information if you're looking for a job, not only in the contact section or contact information, which you have to open up the settings for other than people that are in the first degree connections for people to see. So I recommend highly that you include your contact information, your email and your phone, phone number, in the first line of your about section. You can have it at the end of your about section as well. Gail Houston, who's a recruiter, also talks about social media. So she's got her contact information at least four or five places in her, in her profile so people know how to get in touch with her. The experience section, as I mentioned, should have your job title. If it's an unusual title, like member of design, member of technical staff three, you wanna add what the generally accepted title is that's used in industry in parentheses. You want to have a description of your duties. You want also want to include some of the results of performing those duties, as well as keywords from your profession, because those are the things that recruiters search on. And so you want to make it as easy for recruiters to find you as possible and have as many matches in your profile or your resume as they might have in their, their search criteria. 
You want to have your skills from your profession. Normally, LinkedIn will just list three. It will select them for you if you don't select them uh, on your own. You also want to have endorsements. Again, endorsements are just a checklist. It used to be just a checklist on LinkedIn. Now you have to go in a little bit more effort to do that. But given the opportunity to check information about people and their skills, I frequently will include those kinds of things as I look at somebody's profile. You want to have your education award, certification, and professional development. Many of the profiles that I look at, like resumes, simply talk about somebody's degree if they have one. They fail to mention their awards. They fail to mention their certifications. And they fail particularly to mention the things that they've done since they've gotten a degree in terms of professional development that relate to the job that you're looking for. Again, I emphasize that. Skills that you might have like basket weaving or something that you've done for a hobby are not the kind of professional development things you want to necessarily talk about in your LinkedIn profile. And recommendations. These are basically the same thing as a reference letter. And they, as many of those that you can get, and we'll take a look at my profile and see how those stack up. Again, you want to look at your, your public URL. You want to see if your URL is public. And your URL is right down here. This is how it is. And again, normally it comes with some letters, eight to 12 letters after your name or characters after that. You want to customize it. And you could add MBA or CPA, something that you could do. If you have a, a very common name like Mary Smith or Tom Jones, again, gotta watch my keyboard, it's particularly sensitive. Again, you may have to go in and add John Jones, uh, Dallas, Texas, or CPA or MBA, something that identifies you, to, makes you stand out a little bit. And if you try and enter that and it doesn't allow it, you'll get the red X. If it's one that's accepted, you'll get the green check bar. Okay, here's your public, profile really public. You need to review your settings. So if you go to view your profile and it has the account settings that are there and you can see, oh, what did I do, Jeff? Okay, sorry about that. Again, my touchpad is very sensitive. I have to watch that. So those are some of the things that you can do to change the settings in your profile, make you visible to the, to the public in general out there. Two that you want to change, one is to make sure that your email address is open and can be seen. The other one that you have your connections, you may want to change that and close that because many of your connections are people like you. So recruiters, as they look at those, they built a contact list of other recruiters or other accountants or other sales executives. So those are some things that you might want to go and change while you're doing things like that. The other one, the public profile is your profile is your profile public visibility? These are some of the things that you can check that are open or not. Your background photo, your headline, summary, articles and activity, your past experience and your education. So those are some of the things that are available to you to check in the privacy settings that are available to you. Again, a profile is like a resume. You have six to 10 seconds to get my attention as a recruiter or hiring manager. So you notice some things that are there. In this particular case, I've checked the open to work by linking, opening that up to all LinkedIn members. But you notice down here, again, the senior career consultant. These are some additional titles that you can have. The headline underneath my name, again, you can have, it used to be 120 characters and LinkedIn has expanded that to 220 characters. I've also used the about character. I mean, the uh, pipeline character, which is right here. It's a shift key above your enter key on your keyboard. Again, if you use the, the pipe character or the backslash character, be sure and add a space on either side of that. Otherwise, the term that you put it between will not be a searchable term or merge together like that. Okay. The headline is the title of the jobs that you're looking for. You can have multiple titles there. Notice some of the ones that I've got in terms of me, my background is recruiting consultant, executive recruiter, career consultant, career coach, and open to speaking engagements to workshops and seminars. My contact information is there as well. So those are some of the things that recruiters see when they first go through that. And there's also some things on there when you get to the next page, it will ask you to show, to see more. Well, what you're trying to do is to get them to click to actually see more. Here are some sample headlines. Let's take a look and see what you think of some of these. Unemployed and retired. Both of those are probably true if somebody's put them there. 
but not necessarily the most positive thing to talk about you in your job search. Seeking a new employment opportunity. Again, probably truthful that you are open to new opportunity and seeking, but it doesn't amplify what you're actually looking for. Formally VP of finance is okay for except for the word formally. They're gonna know if you're job hunting and you have it out there, that it's possible that you're not in that job any longer. Here's another one. It's a little stronger experience, digital design engineer seeking a new opportunity. It gives a little bit more indication. This is not a new grad. This is somebody who has a specific area in digital design looking for an opportunity. Social media strategist and content manager. Notice the look, of the use of the pipe characters here as well. But that's a little bit stronger for somebody who's a public relations or marketing and communications specialist. This one is rather short, concise, but it tells the reader that you have experience in supply chain, procurement, uh, purchasing. They might add logistics as another one on that particular one. But these are all short, in some cases, one or two lines to get them on the PowerPoint slide. Senior accountant. Again, there are a lot of those in the Dallas Fort Worth there. So add some amplification to tell what it is that you specialize in. Possibly the general ledger, financial reporting, cost. It might be something else. Manufacturing, accounting. What are the things that you've been involved with? in terms of your profession. Make it easy for the reader to get a quick glimpse of who you are and what you do. Again, executive assistant. There are probably 36,000 of those in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So somebody who's had budgeting and event planning experience that tells people, again, a little bit more of their areas of expertise and their specialization. They could add other things that relate to their career and the things that they've done. Again, another short one, IT project management, ITIL, which is a certification. They've had experience as a scrum master and know something about agile. Again, when IT recruiters are looking for people like that, it's enough to get them to click and see more on your profile. General manager manufacturing aerospace. Again, pretty specific about what the individual's background is. But let's delve a little bit further and take a look at some other headlines and see how that can be better. VP of marketing in global in terms of global marketing. How about VP of marketing creating value for business through effective marketing strategies? Again, this one has gone and added some amplification to what they've done. It's omitted the global marketing in this case, but it's amplified what they've done in terms of marketing. Project manager, there are probably be 40,000 of those in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Program manager and sales manager amplifies that and so they've worn at least three different hats. Again, by saying some other things, specializing in what international business that narrows down necessarily what their, their, where their expertise is, also narrows down what they might be looking for. Customer service, again, customer service, customer relations manager. This is another one that you can see that doing that. And take a look about the open to work or open to, open to new opportunities. It allows you to put in up to five job titles. It, it can be, it's current for five, up, <laughs> excuse me, for up to 90 days. It lets them know where you wanna work, whether it's Plano, you're open to a relocation. I had a candidate last week that I talked to in some of my consulting work, and he's open to uh, where he is now. He's open to Raleigh, North Carolina, Orlando, Florida, and Dallas, Texas. Notice this one is open to greater San Diego, San Francisco area, so somebody who's willing to work in California. Okay, but it allows people to do that. Again, by opening that up, you have that open to work banner if you show it to everybody on LinkedIn. Again, some people don't like that banner and be aware if you use that banner that you're open to opportunities, it may cover up part of your picture, your headshot. So be, be sure to adjust that if that's a possibility. The next thing we wanna talk about dropping down on your, on your profile a little bit is your dashboard. Again, nobody can see this but you, but you notice there are a couple of things that are there. Who viewed your profile, number of posting views that you've had, number of search appearances you've had in. I looked at mine earlier today, I think of a, a period of about 120 searches in the last week. And again, the posting views, because I posted publicity about this speaking engagement and the one next week, I've read probably 1500 people who looked at my posting views. The other thing that LinkedIn has added fairly recently is the salary insights. How do you compare to others in your community? Gives you additional background you get to those questions about what kind of a salary you're looking for, what kind of salary expectations you might have. Okay. So if we click on the search board appearances, again, it's gonna give you some additional information. Oh, for other, before I do that, before we get there, we'll talk another section that's on there is your featured section. 
I have posted my PowerPoint presentations that I've done. Again, you notice some that I've got there. I've updated those and I do that fairly regularly. I think I have seven, but you could have your resume out there. You can have, if you're a design engineer, you can have some things that you may have done, the projects that you may have worked on. If you're a graphic artist, you might have your portfolio. Again, advertising executives the same way. That's some additional things that you can include in your featured section. Again, if I clicked on that search appearances, these are the actual terms that people used in their searches. And these are the companies that they worked at. Okay, companies appears usually first. So people have looked at my background and these are the terms that they've used. Again, probably people in these companies that are looking for a recruiter to help them find a job, not necessarily looking for, for a recruiter for their company, but you never know because recruiters can go both directions. In many cases, if they're looking for somebody like you, they will have termed, use some terms in, you, in your field. The list of companies there might be also a list that you want to add to your targeted companies list because they may have jobs, even though they may not have open positions, but they have jobs for people like you with your kind of experience. Let's talk about the summary section. This happens to be a uh, summary for somebody with a background in financial planning and analysis. They've used that term down here at the bottom before they've used the acronym. Again, that's a term that's widely recognized by recruiters, so just using the acronym might be sufficient. But other terms might not be sufficient. So if you do decide to use an acronym, be sure and spell it out at least the first times that you use it. Again, notice at the top of the, of the, of the summary section, they have their email contact information. Okay? And this is a fairly good description of somebody with a background in financial planning and analysis. A good summary of their background. You do have in your summary section, uh, your about section, you've got 2,000 characters that you can play with. Okay, it's a good idea in your summary section before we leave that to go with four or five lines and then you want to have some, some other kinds of text. This one violates that, but it has used bold and creative. Again, they've cut and pasted from Word documents so they get the bold characters. I'm not sure that the editor in, in, uh, in LinkedIn has allows you to do the bold character like that. Here are some other summaries. Again, in this case, they've used first person. I'm a grateful partner. And they've used some key competencies. So you can use a number of different things. I'm creative and strategic. Again, using soft skills like this frequently in resumes are frowned upon because they can be viewed as fluff if you don't add amplification or examples to, to qualify your experience in that regard. But these are some other samples that are available in terms of summary, different ways that you can do summaries. Let's jump to the experience section next. This just happens to be from my profile. Again, you want to have your job title, your company name and dates, your duties and responsibilities. You want to limit those to three to five lines and then some bulleted areas of accomplishments. Again, in this particular one, I think I have four lines to describe my duties. I have a couple of bulleted accomplishments that are there. And there were, I've also included, this was a final email that was sent to me by the director of recruiting at Oracle when I was at Oracle on my last day. Again, those are some things that you can include on something like that. Your history of what you've done. If you're not working, it's advisable to add a current position. And you can do that by checking on the, when you go to the experience section on you after you viewed your profile here, and click on your experience, I click on this, and it will allow you to add experience or add your experience. I happen on this one to add, Software applications engineer, somebody who's looking at full-time, they're looking in the United States and I started to type in Dallas and you notice that there are several options for Dallas as well from the artificial intelligence that they include in that. So you wanna choose one of those to go ahead and select for that. If you have an up-to-date position like this, if you're not working and have an up-to-date position meaning that you're looking for, you're gonna get more connection requests, and we'll get more profile views and you're like, more likely to get messages from people. Skills and endorsements, just dropping down a little bit further. This is another section. Again, LinkedIn will choose the top three of your skills that they view are important. You can add more. You can have up to 50 different skills, okay? This one, as you start to type in, if it allows that, it will give you a check mark, or you go to go down here and check these as well. Just click on that box, and it will add that to your list of, of skills that are there. It will then list the three skills that you have. Again, this one is the skills and endorsements. 
This is again a picture from mine in terms of career consulting, executive search, and re recruiting. Notice that I've had recommend day or endorsements from 99 people, which is the max that you can get. It also has the endorsement by where I work. This most of these were people when I worked at Mullen and Associates, Mullen International. To move things around in your skills and endorsements, remember I mentioned that there are three. Again, LinkedIn will choose three for you. If you decide that you don't like those, you can click on the blue push pin. And it will drop it down to the ones below and in terms of industry knowledge or others. You can arrange them within the setting by clicking on this four lines, holding that, holding your cursor over that and dragging and drop. So you can rearrange those. But if you were to click career consulting, this push pin, and I wanted just internet recruiting, you push this click pin, a push pin, and it would move up to the top. Hopefully that's that's clear from doing that. Okay. The skills, optimizing your profile that others want to look at. You might want to ask, why would I want to optimize? Why would I want to look at other people's profiles to optimize my profile? Again, this was a search for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, as you noticed. And again, this had 26,500 26, people that, was, that showed up. If I don't show up in the first 10 screens, which is a basically 10 thumbnail sketches per screen, that's 100 thumbnail sketches. If I'm not showing up there. I'm not going to show up in a recruiter search as well. So I can go in and look at, say, Christina or Kaylee or Kelsey and look at their profile, and look at some of the verbiage that they have, some of the words that they've used. If those words are not in your profile, you might want to take some of those words and include them in your profile and see if it can improve your ranking and something like that. So the next area we want to take a look at, what do recruiters really search for? What are the things that they do when they run a search? The first thing they probably you look for, and the most important one, is keywords. Again, when I was recruiting and I moved from Siebel over to Oracle Corporation, I did a search in Minneapolis, Minnesota for a Siebel consultant. So the keywords there were Siebel consultant, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, the job title was what was yours. Okay, consultant was descriptive, and the Siebel was there as well. But they'll look in your your job title, both your current job title, your past and present. They'll look in the headline section, their open to work section, and your employment sections to see about those. And then they look for skills. They'll tend to look for industries if that's important. They'll look at education. They'll look at, edu at location. Again, and location is not ge just geographic location. It's distance from particular job location. That default, if you've ever searched for a job, you noticed on most of the job boards, it's about 25 miles. Because applicants have taught recruiters, I don't want to drive more than 25 miles to work. I've had candidates say, I want to limit that to even 10 miles from where I live. And that's, so we've limited the searches in that case for them. So that's locationally. They'll take a look at some of your, some of your pedigree, some of your companies that you've worked for prior and, and uh, companies, current company, they'll take a, length, take a look at length of service. They're not necessarily looking at job hoppers, but again, I still hear that word occasionally as a recruiter. I don't want somebody who's a job hopper. I looked at somebody's profile today and she'd moved every four years, four years with the longest she'd been with any company. And in her career of 20 years, she probably had 12 different companies that she'd worked for. That says something about stability of the candidate, unless you happen to know that the industry that she worked in was a lot of turnover and churn and burn, if you will. Okay. So those are what the recruiters actually look for. Recruiter searches that LinkedIn runs, they give every, every profile has a, has is searched and given a score for each section of the profile. And those scores add up for each section. Again, a candidate, say a recruiter, they would dip, take the different sections. Those with the highest ranking in each section would be given the highest ranking in terms of the search results. They look at keywords, as I've mentioned. They'll take a look at your skills. The exact match on the title, not just something in the title like consultant, you might have senior consultant, Our senior something else, uh, previous job titles, open to work, geographic location, all-star status, and the number of connections that you had, and comments that you've made on articles and postings. Have you written a blog? Have you posted something? Those are all things that add value. They're counted in, in the score on your profile when it's searched. This is actually a recruiter's, the uh, LinkedIn does sell a package to recruiters. And that's how LinkedIn is designed to sell money. Uh, Kurt uh, Vandermotter, who 
as one of the speakers on this indicated at one time when I sat in on his presentation, they, he spends $19,000 for the license to LinkedIn. I think that's for two seats. Uh, Midge Duncan, who's somebody else that I work with, she has Recruiter Lite. I think she only spends about $6,000 or $5,000 a year for her license. But it has up to 700 different ca categories that you can choose on. You notice some of those that they can just check the boxes. And when they do that, they can narrow that 750 million people down to probably 700 people in 30 seconds or less. Let's actually take a look at some of the recruiter searches. This is a search for a product manager in Seattle. Okay, that was the key criteria that they were looking for. They would take somebody with product marketing as well, product management. Again, they would also consider somebody from the San Francisco area, Silicon Valley. And the companies they want to look for, you notice a couple of companies are in the Seattle area, Microsoft, Amazon, Fluke, all companies in the Seattle area. And also notice the University of Washington is down there. This particular search drew 6,900 responses or candidates that they look at. Some have co company connections and they're also engaged at your brand. So if, if these candidates, you're following the company for their information about product development, openings, activities, Again, 460 people out of the 6,900 actually followed the particular companies. Here's another search. This one is in the Chicago area for a project manager. Again, this one because project manager is a fairly common title, drew about 43,000 responses. Of those, open to new opportunities, but there are only 83 people that were open to new opportunities. So being open to opportunities is valuable to have that checked in somebody's, in somebody's profile. Again, the background, you can see some of the skills that they were looking for, the companies that they were looking for, the companies that they identified, and also the education, Northwestern being a university in the suburbs of Chicago. Okay, let's switch gears and actually do a search for somebody today. Okay, in this particular situation, you can click on the jobs tab up here, at the, right up here. If you enter a title in the job field, and a location in the location field, it's going to give you something. If you just enter a job title and click, click that in terms of the search over here, it will default to the United States. So you do want to enter a location there. You can enter a number of titles and number of searches. The next thing that you want to do, this is an actual search. This was for a senior accountant. I chose Plano, Texas. You notice the 25 miles is right there. It drew 144 results. Again, there's some other things that you want to do once you've done a search. The next thing that you want to do is to hit see the filters. That these are some of the filters that are available. If I were to click on all filters, this is what the all filters looks like. Although LinkedIn has changed the filters. It used to be a full screen, and now it's half of the screen, and you have to scroll through all of these different filters. Again, the one that I suggest for almost everybody is to click the one that says the past week, because anytime you notice there were 22,000, almost 2,100, uh, recruiter openings and just the last week there were 634. Again, a job posting on any internet source, whether it's a job board or on LinkedIn, there can be first, well, first responses generally within two minutes. There can be as many as 300 in the first hour. So you want to do that and set your job alerts and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. Set that and look at that first thing in the morning is a good idea to do that. It's a good idea if you're actually changing your resume to do that in the evening, so it's first thing in the morning in somebody's profile or when they do their searches. But you notice you can also search on salary. This is something new that LinkedIn has added in the last year. You can think of like easy apply, which is over here, which in many cases will simply just take your profile and use that as your application. If you, I would not use that if it, if it does that. I would use an easy apply if it allows you to upload your resume, which you can customize a little bit to the position. You can notice also that you can search by company, you can search by industry, you can search by location, and you can search by job title, job type. Now, job creating job alerts, if I were to do that, by clicking this little button on Recruiter Plano, Texas, and turning the radio button on, if I did that, it gives you the option to choose daily or weekly, which will send you a job alert, a thumbnail sketch of two to three lines every day or once a week. Some job boards have a lot two or three times a week to do that. But when you've done that, this is what it looks like after we've had that in terms of in terms of turning the job alert on. And I do recommend that you do that if you're looking for a job. 
Now let's search for people again, searching for people. This somebody did a search uh, for me. As it turned out, they just entered my first name and which is a little bit unusual. And it turned up there with Locke Alderson, but there's also a, a, law, a legal for a law firm. There's also a hotel. There's an IT services firm. There's an advertising agency, it would appear. Locker room is the, I think that used to sell tennis shoes, didn't it? Didn't, Jeff, if I recall not correctly, here's another attorney firm as well. So just by entering the word lock in the search box, that allows you to do that, but you can search for people that way. And one of the reasons that you wanna search for people is you're looking for possibly contacts with given company. Another thing you could do is to search for people in your own network. So you can search your, put the, put the person's name in there and search your network. And this one drew, this was somebody else's search. They have 2,200, 2,600 consultants or canvas that they're used. The third way that you can, this is the, the filters that you can use on that. Come on, there it is. So you can filter your first and secondary connections and they're looking for people in the Dallas Fort Worth area that worked at Linus International and Richardson. It allows you to do that. The other way that you can search is to do a company search. And this one I started out with Med Electronics or Med Analytics, which is a company over in Richardson over here on Bush and did a search there. I then dropped down when that opened up and did a people search and then for recruiter and came up with that. So it turned out you can find out the names of the recruiter that might be there. Chief of Human Resources, Med Analytics Company in Richardson. Okay, a way that you can do that. Okay, some homework for you to take with you. Complete each section of your profile to increase your rankings when people do a searches. Use the name that you wanna be known by. I actually have, my formal name is John Locke Alderson Jr. I happen to use my middle name, Locke, because my dad was John, I happen to name my son John Locke Alderson III. So I use my middle name. So make it easy for them to call when they call you or contact you. The headline, you wanna put a headline, use the job title or titles that you're interested in looking for. If you don't use a title, it's gonna to default to the last title in your employment section. Complete the open to work section, even if you don't turn it on to all of LinkedIn. There are people that might be working, but you don't want people to know that you're working or you don't like that green banner, it looks like a Kentucky Derby winner with a banner of roses around their neck. But again, it's a way to let people know that you're looking. Do include your phone number and your email address in the top line of your about section. Make it easy for the recruiter, the hiring manager to reach out to you. Again, not everybody and rec every rec recruiter is gonna have, a have signed up for the license from LinkedIn, but they have access to that 750 million people. Again, but you want to be able to be found and to be able to be contacted. In your employment section, your experience section, include the company name, the job title, and if the company is not well known, you might want to include a one-line disclaimer about what the company does. I know I worked for a company called Mostec at the time in the late 70s, early. Yeah, Jeff, in the late 70s, early 80s, they were the world's leading producer of random access memory. They went out of business in 83, so not everybody knows about them. So if that's the kind of situation, make it easier for them to identify with who the company is that if you work in a high technology firm. And have the measurable accomplishments as they add credibility, not just what did you do? Again, so all too often I ask the question, so what? What's the story? What's the result from performing these duties if I talk to somebody? And have the keywords. You know what the keywords are in your profession. So use them. That's what recruiters are actually looking for, to see if you know your profession. And include the skills from your profession. And choose the ones that you want, not necessarily the ones that LinkedIn has chosen for you. Jeff, I'm going to turn it back to you, my friend. Great, Locke. Thank you very, very much. Uh, if there is anybody out there you'd like us to look at your profile, uh, please put your, uh, put, in, put your name in the chat box, and uh, we'll go take a look at your profile. And just remember, it'll be public, so it'll be out there for everybody on Facebook and, and LinkedIn, or Facebook and YouTube to see. Priscilla Holly, all right. Uh, let me share my screen, so. What have I got there, Jeff? There you go. I'll share my screen so we can do okay. this. Let's see here. Chat box. Chat box back up here. 
All right, where'd my chat box go? There it is, okay. So, uh, Uh, Priscilla, I guess you're the first one on here, I hope. Yes, no, make sure. Yes, that looks like you. Yes, it looks the same as you do in the, okay. So, uh, I mean, Locke, make comments and. Well, again, Priscilla, your PhD, you know, I create people strategies. That doesn't tell me a lot about you. You've used about 60 characters. You've got 220. So there's some real estate there in your headline below your below your name, but you could be more descriptive of what you're doing. Okay. Okay. What is what is it that you do? What do you want to do? What are some of the job titles that you want to use? You remember some of the ones that I have, which would be like logistics or account. What are some of the create strategies? Well, are you a kind of a strategy, business strategies? Are you talking about upper, you know, strategies for Career consultant, operation development. What are you talking about? About strategies to maximize efficiency. That doesn't tell me a lot of it. It's a soft skill, but there's no explanation to it. Okay. Again, the 500 contact. Click on her contact information. Well, Jeff, she should have that. But again, so she's a first degree connection for you. Okay. So she has her phone number and her email address. Okay. Sometimes even the first degree connections, people haven't opened that up. So the, their first three can, connections can take a look at that. So let's close that. Scroll on down a little bit. I do like this. I do want to point this one out. This little speaker thing here. This is a feature they added a while back. Let me click on it. Let's see what we hear. <laughs> this was added about six months ago. You're the first person I've seen that's ever used it. I really, that's really great. Uh, it was put on there for those people who have a hard to pronounce name, because what you've done is you've made it easy. I mean, Priscilla Holly, I mean, that I can, you know, we cannot, we can do, but if you had a very hard name or an unusual sounding name, here is a great way to add it. Now, I think you can only add this if you're on, you can't add it off your desktop, but if you're on your mobile phone, you can go and add that feature and you have, I think, 10 seconds that it'll add. So Priscilla, congratulations, thank you. You are correct. It, it, it's really quick. It's 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Because it's just there for to get the, their name on there to make it easy for somebody to do their name. First thing about your about section, Priscilla, add your contact information you have at the bottom, put it at the top because you had to click and see more to be able to get to it. Okay. You've used about, about 150 characters in your about section. You have 2,000 that you can use there. So you're not doing yourself justice about your, your experience, what you can do. You know, and I think it's fine for people when they go and they add this on to add their top five strengths from Strength Finders or from Clifton Strengths. But I think you need to talk about how it is you do that. We'll take a look at my profile here in just a second. And you'll see in my about section that I've actually sort of written a sentence about each word. So it sort of explains what learner means what I you know that you love to learn that you're you know whatever those terms are you'll we'll, we'll, we'll show you that in just a second I had that, all of that and I just changed it last week because I really wasn't getting any chat traction I had a full storyline and then I had each one of my strengths like you mentioned something added for each one of them I wasn't getting any traction so I took it all off because some people that I know that have landed had a very minimal about section, but it was more probably more specific than what I have. And so, you know, I've saved each one because you can go in and save it as a PDF file so I can go back and add in a little bit more verbiage. But I would add, I a, would add, Priscilla, I would go in and add them, but keep it to three lines uh, and then change up the text, you know, three lines of text and then maybe a bulleted item below it. Again, okay. break it up so it's easier to read. Your right. featured section like there, wait, before you go around, I like the fact that you've got a video in there that people can take a look at. The letter that's there, again, you've got, uh, there's about five lines and then about six lines to go ahead through and read, okay? So, and you've got a diagram there uh, for COVID-19. Again, I would go through some of these. So you've had a lot more experience and you're giving yourself credit for in the first couple lines. 
Because also remember your about us section is a great place to load it up with keywords because yeah. when a recruiter does a search, they're going to search for somebody that does, that has a certain word. And if you can get it in there three to five times in your profile, not, you know, your about us section and we're in a couple jobs, it's going to pop up and show somebody that you do this all the way through your profile. Thank you. Okay, the first two that you've got there are these, these are positions that you've added. These are not necessarily, uh, would appear to be full-time positions. Nothing wrong with those. That's, that says what you've done since you pro probably last had a full-time position. Okay, which is great for that. It adds credibility to what you've been doing. Okay. Okay, business analyst is a thing that I would put up in, if, unless that's something that you don't wanna do. A business advisor is another thing that I want to do. Strategic business partners, another word's up in your headline. Again, in your headline, that's what you're trying to do is to get people to look further at your profile. Remember I said six to 10 seconds. You've got to have some grabber phrases at the top so that people are going to continue. Okay, and you've taken some classes. This is something new, some of the tests and certifications that LinkedIn offers. So didn't mention, which is good. They aren't in every field, but you've taken a couple and done that. You've got some of your volunteer experience in there as well. Your skills and endorsements. That question before you do that, notice she's got the pluses there. Jeff could go through and check those. He's recommending you for those and how he would know you. Okay. That's what I meant about in, endorsing people is you can do that as you go through and look at people's profile. Those may not be the, the three items that you want to choose that you have up there in skills and endorsements. So if you wanted some others, you go in and when you look at your profile, click on the push, blue push pin and it'll drop down to the other section like there. I have a question regarding that. Mm -hmm. When you change them, apparently they get lost, especially if somebody has endorsed you for one of those um, in the endorsement field and you can't get it back. So um, that's kind of iffy. I don't, I don't know that it gets lost in the endorsements area because the, you notice the number, those numbers stay with that field. Notice the six or the two or the three, they stay with that, but they may not have the endorsed by that's shown up there in the top three that you've got. That's all the only where they, they disappear. Okay. It won't say who endorsed you, it just gives the number, but they are not, their comment are not lost. You've got nine recommendations, which is great, okay, to have something like that as well. So you've added an accomplishment at the courses area, which is really great. Those are some companies that you're following, that you're interested in. Again, that adds credibility when public, when you do a search and a recruiter say, from Wells Fargo looks at you and adds credibility to you that you're interested in their coming. Makes it easy for the recruiter says you're a little bit easier to contact than somebody who isn't interested in their company. It's a harder recruit. Now, the one thing I don't see, I mean, I know you have a current job. Let's see here. No, mm -hmm. I don't have a current job. But yeah, you've got two listed. Well, I mean, but you're right. I mean, you have a current job listing, which gets you to the top by looking at this. I mean, it just says that you're actively pursuing, but you don't tell anybody that you're looking for work. Yes, I, I well, took she, that she, may, she may have got that turned off. So it's only open to recruiters, Jeff. That's one of the options that you have. Right. If you're looking for work, I would turn that on. Green banner yeah. or not, let people know you, you're looking. You could, yeah, and the reason for that is, I mean, I know there's a recruiting firm that, you know, I've talked with many times, they have like 30 recruiters and not one of them pay for the recruiting package, either the light or the full blown version. So they would never know by looking here that you're looking for a job. Uh, any of your contacts, I mean, I'm, you have 500 plus contacts. If they happen to just see your profile, they're not gonna understand that you're looking for a job. So when you're looking for a job, you know, at the very beginning, when they first did it, there was a lot of discussion. Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? But nowadays, you want a job and you, you're going to get your job through networking. So you need to make sure that all your friends and all your connections know that you're looking because if they happen to go, oh, Priscilla, I used to work with Priscilla way back when, you know, I liked her. I want to work with her again. So don't, uh, 
put the green banner on there. You take it off when you get a job. You know, when you get a job, you take it off. All right. Try, appreciate so, Priscilla, what I would recommend is try it for a week and see if it gives you some additional results. I'll right. do that. Thank you. All right. And this is, like I said, this is prime real estate right here. So be sure to put a couple job titles that you'd be interested in, you know, three or four job titles, and then just put it right before this. And then you can put this comment, this statement right after that, because when somebody does a search, this is what's going to pop up real quick. If you happen to watch uh, Kurt's presentation, which is actually going to be next week, when he searches for somebody, he only sees like six or seven lines. And one of the lines that he sees is right here what the job titles that this, the person has underneath their job name until he goes and expands their profile. So, yeah. you know, I think if he doesn't see job titles here, he's going to be like, you know, what is this person looking for? All right, let's take a look at, uh, see, Leon wanted to look at his. Um, the first one on the list, thank you. Is this you? Yep. Okay. Uh, now this is really weird how it looks. Oh, I don't know, let's go for people. Can I ask one additional question about that area? Do, can we do is it preferred to do it in all caps i've heard yay and nay on that doesn't Under matter name yes Does, it don't, i doesn't think it matters to your personal preference all right thank i mean you. i personally do not like all caps because it means you're shouting <clears throat> that's what i you know you know you're, you're i'd rather see upper and lower personally but up to you Okay, so Leon's got a background, a uh, second degree connection. Let's see his contact information. He has an email address, so I can see it even though I'm not connected yet. I will connect with Lee. I have a note. If you're doing the, in the add the connect button, always add a note whether you've met somebody or heard about them, uh, that you saw a presentation on careerdfw.org today. Let the people, because I, I still get contacted for information from people in India and China. I don't accept all of those. Right. So uh, let's see here. So he's got his email address. Uh, let's see here. Coming on. He's down. got his oh. contact. He's made it easy. He has his contact information on the top line of his about section. Right. Even if I'm not a first degree connection, I can reach out and, re and make contact with him. And you may want to put your phone number since you have it there. You may want to go ahead and Add it here into your contact information so it shows up there also. Another thing, Jeff, go back to his contact information for a second. He has not customized his URL. Notice all the digits after his name. Just the digits after his name. Right. He, you can take those out and you could put something about who you are. IT exec. Might be a dash IT exec. Might okay. be something that you add there. Right. If you have experience with Agile or Scrum. Something that identifies you and makes you a little bit unique. Yeah, and it just makes a difference. I mean, if you've been using this for the last five years and this is how everybody knows you, you may want to leave it because I think it will change on how people can search for you again. Yes, I, I have been applying some jobs and I put it the, the link already. Changing is going <laughs> to right. give me two options, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see here. Um, you have a lot more room. You've got 2,000 characters here, so you can put a lot thing, more. Okay. The and other I, thing that I would add, I would have two or three lines and then a blank line. I would do a carriage return so that you break, break that up. You yeah, might I also think, add, you know, what were some of the accomplishments? What were some of the things that you've done there? Use that as a bulleted item. And while the editor within LinkedIn, I don't think allows you to use bullets, you can use an asterisk or you can use a dash and then a space. It accomplishes the same thing as using a bullet which automatically includes a space. He's included his, his resume, he's included it as part of his job, which you can do right there. You can also include it in the, in the um, featured section. I think there's a feat, yeah. You can add a section, Jeff. See if you can find the plus for. Well, we don't have his. We don't have his profile. So, on your profile, Leon, you're going to have a plus section where you can add a section. Okay. And you could do featured, and you could do put your resume there. It's fine. It's part of your experience with with NICE. 
And, and I would recommend not putting a resume on LinkedIn because your resume is all this data, but put a one page bio because yeah. it's a higher level document. It sort of tells people who you are without getting into the weeds because quite frankly, you want to customize every resume you send out to a job description. So by putting a generic resume here, you may Maybe. have some skills or things you didn't talk about that you can do that somebody needs, but they're not going to know it because it's not on there. And you may be limiting yourself to what's in your resume, not what you can do or what you've already done. Right. Uh, I would also, once again, break this up. Nobody's going to read seven lines of, de of text. Three We're lines maximum two. with some bullet points underneath it. Okay. Two paragraphs, maybe three. Has right. experience, notice it has experience at Amdocs. LinkedIn has done that. They've linked all of those together. That's what that line down the side. No experience. Click on the show more. Or again, to see more experience. This he was with Amdocs for 17 years. So much of his experience was with Amdocs. Okay. All right. But once again, break these too too much text. Nobody's going to read that. Uh, put a space between you know this period and the first bullet point. Yeah, leave submitted. a blank line between your between your bullet and your text, okay? Right. And maybe three or four lines max of text, and then a couple of bullets is, would be better. You know, what do you want? What was the thing that you accomplished in that experience? What was the biggest thing that you worked on? Yeah, so he's got five more rows. So, I mean, he was there for quite a long time. I mean, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, keep yeah. going. Now, and this is the question, how far should we go into the LinkedIn? Well, again, you can put it all of that. LinkedIn allows you to put all of that in. And if I'm interested in more, I'll click to see more, OK? But for the recruiter, it's, it's good to have also so many. Yeah, I'd have your recruiter. complete history. You know, okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. On a resume, it's, you only want you know, two pages, maybe three if you've got a technical background. Yeah. Again, okay. you've taken a couple of the classes on LinkedIn, the certifications. Okay, which is great. Your skills and endorsements are those the three that you want to appear, integration, telecommunications, and software project management. If not, click on that blue push pin and, and choose one of the ones down below in the show more information. And again, those are the three, only three that people see without clicking on the show more. But when a recruiter does a search, they it will pop up in the search. So make sure that you've picked, you know, 45 to 50 skills, things that you're good at. Uh, to put on there. So it's got a couple recent, couple recent uh, recommendations. I love it. Business partner. You know. The other thing that you might want to do, Leon, in your heading is to put bilingual. Okay. In your headline, because the Spanish is in our culture here is more relevant there. The Hebrew. Not so much here in the Dallas area, but again, that's relevant for certain areas of the world. Very important. And you could just put down bilingual, trilingual. You don't have to say what they are because yeah. what's the point? The point here is to get them to call you up on the phone. Well, what languages do you speak? And then you have an opportunity. You get them on the phone. That's the whole key to this. All right, see so what we down here at the bottom. Skills, recommendations. Oh, yeah, definitely. So trilingual. Okay. And... Interest. Uh, just right. make sure that, uh, you know, every company you apply for, that every company that you are interested in, go be sure to follow those companies because a recruiter can see that. Good. An internal recruiter can see, well, how many people are actually following me when I do a search? Or when they ask you, company? they can ask you the question, what can you tell me about my company? You have some information that you can talk from. Jeff, let's see if we could do somebody else or we have somebody who wants to look for a job. All right, let's look for a job. Somebody want to put a name of a company in you'd like us to look at? Let's see here. Or a profession. Or a profession. Put something in the chat box and we will pop it up here. Name of a company or a profession. That I'm looking for? Yeah, well, what are you looking anybody. for? Admiral. Salesforce. Admiral. Yes, uh, let, let's put the um, um, or Google, yeah. So Salesforce, so there's a couple different ways. You want 
company in interest. So this is the main sales force. Mm -hmm. He's looking for a job. So let's back up a little bit, Jeff, to that. Use your back arrow and go back on, because that's an option you entered sales force. Use your back arrow on the upper left-hand corner and we'll go back a screen up further to the left. There you go. Well, what, well, look on, this the, sales, is a look on the sales force that's there. Okay, notice that there are three different areas. You can find people that work at Salesforce, you can com company information, and then jobs. If we clicked on jobs, about, he's not been very specific about the jobs. These are the ones that are there. Again, the filters, I would always go in and check, unless you're just inter really interested in the company. If you're interested in jumping, past week or even the past 24 hours and show results. So we cut it down. Salesforce is looking for a bunch of people worldwide. Yeah. I'm just picking a few categories to see if I can get it down a little bit. Oh, uh, this is also, awesome. uh, these are anywhere that's, these are not necessarily Jobs at Salesforce. Right. These, these are, these are job the postings that have the word Salesforce in the posting. Right, right. Yeah, you because can a choose company. Program. Choose company, Jeff, for a second. Okay. Notice Salesforce is not limited. You can add that at the top as a company. There it is, right below. No matching jobs. Didn't have any openings here, okay? But again, it might be a company that you wanna follow even though they don't have a current opening for you in the last 24 hours. Again, opening 24 hours up, sometimes jobs are a little harder to fill as a recruiter. Recruiter may leave that posting open for two or three weeks at a time. But by changing the 24 hours to seven days, you may get some hits. All right, let's, uh, let me just do one more thing here. Let's see here, oops, let's get out of jobs here, reset. While you're mentioning that, Jeff, I'll just say anybody who's interested in the slide deck, it's lockalderson at gmail.com and I'll be happy to send you the slides. All right, all right, let's stop there because it's after two o'clock. Uh, Locke, thank you very much. Uh, great presentation. Next week, our, uh, our presenter is uh, Kurt Vonnemater. He's a executive recruiter. He has a retained recruiter. He pays the big bucks for the full-blown recruiting package, and he's going to show you what it looks like next week. So it's always a fascinating presentation. He wants to find you, so he's going to tell you how to make it easy for recruiters to be found that are using the recruiting package. So please join us next week, next Tuesday at uh, 1 o'clock. Okay, I need everybody on the line right now to please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jeff Morris, promise to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. Very, very, very important because I get connection requests every day. And right now I have like 80 people who have not gotten connected requests to me because they didn't send me a personal note. I don't know how I met them. So always send a personal note. Let people know why you want to connect with somebody. And it, the whole key is look for the blue connection button. If it's a white button, you won't be able to send a personal note. But if it's blue, you will be able to send that personal note. Okay, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training five days a week. Hopefully, you'll join us. Uh, grab a lunch and learn. Uh, on, let's see, whoops, something didn't switch. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, for interviewing Wednesdays, we're starting out with our 13-part workshop on everything you want to know about interviewing. Who knew that it would take three months to go deep dive into interviewing? So there's 13 sessions every Wednesday. This uh, Tomorrow, they'll talk about the very beginning, how to prepare to be interviewed, how employment recruiters work, and developing internet uh, interview tools. On Thursdays, for Effective Resume Thursday, we'll have a discussion about photos and resumes, do's and don'ts, as well as we'll share res, uh, basic uh, resume tips and tricks. 
This Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, we'll have open, boy, I have misspellings here. Wow, sorry about that. Open forum. You have your questions about your job search, please ask us. And uh, you can, uh, it sort of be an open free for all for everything that's going on. Uh, the first and third Fridays of every month, and this Friday will be the first Friday, Women of Wisdom. If you're a woman and you have wisdom or you'd like to gain some wisdom, you're welcome to join this group. You do need to, it's by invitation only. You do need to send an invitation to wowwow at careerdfw.org, and then you'll get invited on Thursday. They like to keep it limited to 20 or 25 people because there's a lot of discussion that they have, and they want to make they don't want it to be 50 or 60 people it would be too much uh, to talk about. Uh, next Monday for Networking Mondays, our guest speaker will be Locke Alderson, who's with us today. He's going to talk about networking to network. So uh, please join us uh, next Monday at one o'clock. Uh, if you have not joined our LinkedIn groups, we have a Career DFW and a CareerUSA.org LinkedIn group. You're welcome to join both of them, even if you don't live in the DFW area. Uh, our Career DFW group's been around since 2008, and we have currently over 13,000 members. So it's a great way to just expand your connections. This session has been recorded as well as most of our sessions are. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. Please follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way, every time uh, we do a presentation, you'll find out about the latest episode that just went on online. And the nice thing about it is you can always go back and hear the words that go along with the slide deck that uh, our speakers talk about. On the Career USA YouTube channel, it looks something like this. Be sure to click on playlist where you see the green arrow. And then don't click on the video, but click down below where you see the red arrow where it says view full playlist. And when you do that, up will come a list of all the different uh, events that have been recorded. Uh, if they're not in, they should be the most recent at the top. If not, click on the little sort button at the very top and you can get it uh, resorted to the most current one on the very, very top. Uh, if you're not receiving emails about our workshops and you'd like to join the Career USA mailing list, uh, I put out six or seven emails a week. You will not, you will not get spammed. Only I can put an email out. Uh, but you will get the daily link, the, top, the daily topic, along with the daily Zoom link to join our email or to join our accounts. Please remember, Career DFW, we're just a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Locke is a volunteer. All of our speakers are volunteers. We're just here to help you land your next great opportunity. I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid to do what I do. This is what I do to give back to the job seeking community. We survive on donations. Please consider making a job, making, uh, please consider making a donation when you get your next great job. So thank you for joining us today. Hopefully we'll see you later in the week. Uh, or we'll see you next Tuesday. And there's that email address if you'd like to join the list, and I'll leave that up for a little while. So everybody, thank you again. Locke, thank you very, very much for your time today. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Thank you Jeff, very much. Jeff, would you put the wow 